just to understand who I'm talking to, which one of you is a designer? And which one of you are a developer? Who does both? OK, nice. So uh, I'm Shirat Goldstein, Goldstein and, uh, and I'm a designer, and I'm a developer, and I own my own business. And the name of my session is Designers versus Developers, a Fatal War or a Formula to Success. But basically, I'm going to try and talk to you about my own war between the design and the development in my war, in my world, in my work. So Steve Jobs says, design is a funny word. Some people think design means how it looks. But of course, if you dig deeper, it's really how it looks, that it's really how it works. So I think that web design is the combination between these two between how things look and how things work. So a little bit about myself. I'm 32 years old. I'm married for 14 years, do the math. I have three kids and two fish and one god. I am a religious Jew from Israel. I have a degree, a bachelor's degree in communication and political science, a certificate in journalism. I've been doing until I was 22, uh, a lot of um, video editing. That's what I did in high school. And, um, and, and, at one point I found myself at uh, 23 with a, 22, at, with a one year old in the house and no job. So my dream was to change the world, to come and do some journalism or uh, some uh, movie making and let people think differently and show my beliefs. In the reality, I didn't want to be a stay-at-home mom, but I didn't want to work 24-7 or 7-7, seven to seven, which, was, which, which is what I was expected to do. Um, I wanted uh, money, but I didn't want to work so hard. So I looked for something that would combine my creativity, my passion to, for computers, something that I can do at home, something that I can get paid for quite well. So I chose the design and the development war. Um, I finished my course in graphic and web design in a small college in Israel. I finished it and I didn't know a thing. Basically, they didn't, look, they didn't teach me anything. So I jumped into the deep water and I decided to become a teacher at the place where I was, um, where, where I learned. So I found myself teaching the most professional designers who came to learn some uh, new techniques in After Effects, uh, Action Script, uh, Illustrator, InDesign. I was coming home, sitting until four o'clock in the morning, learning new skills getting to school next day, teaching them something that I didn't know until the day before. Two years later, and I had my twins, and I thought that this is exactly the right time to become a freelancer. I had different clients with different needs, um, and I was at my beginning of my path. So I did some flash banners and book covers and brochures and web design, some HTML and CSS, even some video editing and computer gaming at one point. Whatever my client wanted, that's what I learned and did. Um, so then I kind of like realized that just because I can doesn't mean that I should. I was a one woman band and I loved it but it was starting to become quite difficult. So there were some benefits to being a one woman, one woman show. I do believe that being a one-stop shop to my clients, it's something very, very important. If I would be able to have a, a whole company with a designer and a developer and a marketing person and an SEO and a video editing, et cetera, et cetera, that's what it would be. So being this one-woman show 
gave me the ability to offer whatever my client needed in the marketing and, um, and design world. I had variety in my job. I had a lot of different skills and a lot of different things that I did. It was very, very interesting. And I learned something new every day, which was amazing. Uh, I didn't need to split money with anyone. I gave a budget to the project. I did the project myself. I got all the money. And the best thing, I was my own boss. But then started, things started to become a little bit more difficult. I started having some traffic jam on the way. Um, when you have a big project and you do it all, then you start missing deadlines. It's not possible to, to have a big project and to do it all and to do it well. I had no specialty. I did it all. I think I did it good. But I wasn't special in anything that I did. And I did things that I needed to do because client wanted me to do it. And I found myself not doing things that I love. And money, the one that before I was so happy about, when you miss deadlines and when you work on big projects and we start working 24-7 to do a project because you don't really know what you're doing. So again, I was sitting until 4 o'clock in the morning learning something, coming the next day and presenting something to the client that I didn't know until the day before. So amazing as it may be, I didn't earn any money at the end of the month. So then um, a colleague of mine decided, uh, friend, my best friend actually, decided to become a colleague of mine. She's an SEO person and a marketing woman, and she decided to become a freelancer. And, um, and then she had a big project. The project was for a religious education organization in Israel. And in Israel, re religious people is about half the popularity so um, so what, it was a big 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 project so I needed to present a website um, sorry paper means that I need to find where I am so I needed to present a website with a CMS something that I wasn't familiar until then I did everything myself so I did the code and I presented people with their website at the end. I need something that would be flexible enough, something, something that would be efficient, um, something that would be free of use. It was a big project. It was worth the money. But I needed to do it in a week and a half. So um, I decided, OK, I will work 24-7 for a week and a half, get all that money. But those clients still didn't want to pay a, C a paid CMS. A monthly fee every month. So I needed to find a solution. And then I found Joomla. So Joomla is free. So I was able, I didn't need to pay a developer to develop a CMS for me. I didn't need to pay a CMS a monthly fee. Uh, so that purpose was OK. It was open source, which means I was able to take it and tweak it and do whatever I want with it. and. Um, and still, I still have the flexibility that I needed. Support, our community is so big at support um, that it is so amazing. Um, and I needed something that would uh, split the design and the content. So I would be able to give my clients an ability to change the content, but still not ruin the, des the design I worked so hard on. So Joomla was my, my holy grail, my, my solution to all my problems. <clears throat> Sorry. So I came to Joomla because of the, the great system, and I stayed because of the community. And I'm working with Joomla for four and a half years, I'm thinking. And and this is the best decision, the best business decision I did in my life. But I started working with Joomla, and then I have templates and modules, and everything is so nice and easy. And I was saving money on on development hours, and I was saving time since I had things already prepared. And I was able to continue to be a one-woman show uh, without, without needing to outsource at this point. But then I had a grid and a template and set of rules. 
And if I would take my design the way that I used to do and put it into the CMS, just take the photos and crop them and put them inside, then I would have a slow website. But on the other hand, I started feeling that I'm getting um, to the point where I get the most simple sites. So they'll be fast and easy and I'll save time and I'll save money. But I didn't feel that I'm working enough on the design. So I needed to look for a bridge between these two things. And uh, what I'm going to show you now is basically what I feel that, um, that th the solutions I think I found. Okay. So it's basically concept and limits and inspiration and patterns and think out of the box. And those are things that uh, we hear all the time. So to the people who are not designers or developers, I would just say that it's more than just to communicate with a designer or the developer, which is supposed to be obvious. It's a little bit more than that. So concept. I needed to find a way to know a little bit more about development and to know a little bit more about design to be able to, to combine them both. Knowledge is power. Um, so let's talk a little bit about development if you are a designer. So I found it that knowing HTML and CSS is nice. But as time goes by, you have to learn many, many, many more skills. So JavaScript and PHP and Angular and jQuery. And at one point, it's just too much to keep up with. But the most important thing is that if you understand the concept of the de development and the idea of the OOP, I can't remember now how to to say those, uh, never mind. Uh, if you understand it, then you know how to search in Google, and you know how to copy some code, and you have basic understanding of the subject, then you can implement those things in your work. And on the other side, if you are a developer and you're used to writing code, you should have at least basic understanding about concept and colors and typography and many other things that I won't say now. Um, and knowing a little bit about both allows you to, to be flexible enough and understand what the other side is doing or for even for your own projects. Um, your limits. Your limits may not be where you think they are. So I think that limits are a little bit, I would take the limits for web design and I would compare them to limits with education children. So. I have three children, and my oldest is 11, so I have some a little bit experience in the subject. And I think that I can see a lot of parents around me, and some of them would say, you have to limit your kids. Don't let them access to their computer. Don't let them go out with friends at night. Don't let them do this. Don't let them that. And the kids would feel that they are in, those, in this little, little box, and they have to try and, and get out of the box. So my uh, philosophy of, of limits is that you need to know your limits, and limits are important. Boundaries are important. Without boundaries, everything would be free. But you have to give enough space within, inside the limits, for space to, to experiment and try and change and think. And until now, I think my kids are doing quite well within those limits. Inspiration. Um, I want to tell you a secret. We are not going to invent, to invent the next wheel. The wheel was already invented. But what we can do is we can go and see and look what other amazing people did and try to get some inspiration from their work and try to implement it in our work and try to find maybe a unique way to, do, to take this inspiration and put it in our work. So uh, from development sides, uh, there are... Um, patterns, but not the patterns that we know from design. There are patterns in development that you can take and use in your own job, in your own work, um, which give me the ability to, again, save time and save money on development and thinking and checking and finding solutions. 
And the last thing is think think out of the box. Lost my page. So um, basically, be creative. Um, Kyla talked yesterday about uh, teaching our kids problem solving, which is basically what we do in our daily job, if it's with the design or with the development. Try to find of new things, new creative things to solve the solution um, in front of you. So when I began working with Joomla four years ago, it was I had an event site, and um, not an event site, a travel agency, and I had this very basic design, and they had not so nice logo, and I needed to find a way to take this into a template. I didn't know enough about templates in order to tweak it like I know today, so I needed to find a way to find a solution to solve it. So, um, you know this? So I took a picture of this, and I put it on the logo, and I changed it a bit, and I put it a little bit to the side. And that was a solution for me at that time with my knowledge that made the site look so different than any other site that was then on the market. So, so look for, think outside of the box. Try to solve problems. Try, try to find simple solutions. Don't waste time on uh, trying to invent the wheel, but try to find simple solutions to solve small problems that will make a big difference in your work. So I was talking about my concepts in, uh, the, between development and design, and I want to talk a little bit about my concept of um, me being a, a one-woman show. So I think that you, you should learn yourself and know your limits and know what you can do and what you cannot do and embrace it and live with it and understand it. And as soon as you'll know that, then it will be easier for you to work. So uh, people were amazed when I told them that, but I work five hours a day. Sometimes not even that, but that's just my limit. I cannot work more than that. So I have to find solutions to put my work into this five hours and to find solutions to make enough money to be able to work this five hours. Learn. Learn something new every day. So it doesn't have to be learn now, okay, go learn JavaScript, a whole course in one day. Obviously not. But try to do something new in your project every day, and you'll see that soon enough, after a month, after two or three months, you get your, your skill sets high enough. So know your limits and know what you cannot do, but try to put new things in your work every day so it, at the end you will get where you want to get. Um, form a support group. So this one is actually something that I found within our community. We have such a support group in, my, in our community. So I'm in my Joomla user group. I'm the manager of my user group in Israel, and I'm part of the marketing team of Joomla. And I have some friends that are also developers and designers. So being able to tell them what I feel and have a safe environment to be able to express my feeling and my fears is very, very important. And I can see in my uh, Joomla user group that I, ha I had something a few weeks ago. Somebody wrote to me a private message on the Facebook asking for help. So I said, okay, I would love to help you. So she wanted me to meet me in my house. Uh, Jessica, this is exactly for your security uh, reach. And then I realized that her picture is a little bit weird. So I uh, went and searched for this image, and <laughs> to my surprise, I found it in a different site. Obviously, she wasn't who she was talking to. She wasn't who she was talking about. So um, I explained to her that I would be happy to help her, but I would have, she would have to identify herself. So her answer was that she is new in the field and she's afraid to ask questions as her own self because she's afraid that people won't respect her for what she does. But each and every one is starting at one point and we have to have a support group and a place that we can ask questions without fearing that we do not know what we're talking about. We are professionals and it's okay to ask questions. It doesn't have to be one or another. 
One before the last, cooperation. So if I work five hours a day, then basically I cannot do all the work myself. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. It depends on the project, it depends on how big it is. So find yourself some people with the same skill sets or that are a little bit more professional than you are and form a relationship with them. Not only calling them once in a half a year saying, okay, I need you now, make my, make my work. You cannot count on that. You have to form a relationship with them. At one point, it would be two sides relationship. So they will give you work when they are, when they have too much. And you will give them work when you have too much. But be considerate about it and make it into a friendship more than, um, more than just, you know, just giving your job to somebody else. And the last thing, be confident about yourself and about your abilities. Never tell a client, I do not know how to do that. This is not possible. Try always to find a way, since we always want to learn new things and it's interesting and it's part of the first benefits of being a one-woman show. So try to, to tell your client, um, I need to check it. It's a valid uh, answer to a client. It needs to be checked. I'm not for sure. I hope it is possible. I'm going to check it. I'm going to come back to you. Be confident with your abilities to learn new things. And with the cooperation with other people, I'm sure that every, pos every project is possible to do. So uh, in conclusions, I think that any designer without an understanding about development cannot live in this day, in, in this web world. And a developer that doesn't understand a little bit about design is exactly the same thing. If you want to work together and get a project done, to the end, we have to understand each other and we have to understand the concept and we have to, uh, to be able to do small and little things by ourselves. So um, thank you very much for listening. And, uh, <laughs>